Hello and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Mountains, and today we're gonna see what's new in version 1.5 of this. Right now I'm in the Explodudes demo scene and before I show you anything more, maybe let's have a look at a short trailer of what this demo does. So um, yeah, that's the new, the new demo, uh, obviously inspired by Bomberman. And uh, the reason why I added this demo to the engine is that I wanted something to showcase the new grid movement ability, which is the major uh, new feature of version 1.5. So this demo showcases that. You can see that when I move around with my red character in the top left corner, um, whatever I do, I always end up perfectly on the grid. I can't uh, stop midway through that gray block, for example. I'm I'm on this cell or this cell, or this cell, but I can't really be in between except when I'm moving. Um, the cool thing with that is that it, it gives some really tight gameplay and for stuff like Bomberman, Pac-Man, any sort of tactical game, uh, Curse of the Necromancer, that kind of games, that's really what you're going for. You want grid movement. So today I'm going to show you a bit more about grid movement and how you can use it in your game. I'm going to first explain a bit the structure of this demo and then we'll move on to a more minimal demo to have a look at the details of grid movement. So the specifics of this one, uh, you'll find here uh, a level manager, but as you can see, it has an exploded multiplayer level manager. And this is a custom class you'll find all the classes that are very specific uh, to the Explodudes, so uh, the bomb, the crate, uh, we've got some decoration stuff, uh, it's done to, it's a class that makes all these cubes around the level jump every time a bomb explodes. Uh, then we have the multiplayer level manager, something to handle the start screen, uh, a class to spawn the bombs, so the, the weapon, and uh, we've got a class to handle the winner screen. So all of these uh, I wouldn't recommend using in your game, but you can uh, of course look at look at them and copy them and modify them. That's the, the way to do things, but they are very specific to this demo and may not be as generic as the rest, as the rest of the engine, of course. Um, so one of the things that makes uh, this demo work is the level manager. Uh, it's quite similar to the one in the Grasslands demo, the other multiplayer, four players demo scene in the engine, um, in that it takes a bunch of player prefabs, puts them at certain multiplayer spawn points. So these are, uh, you know, the red, blue, yellow, and green ones, and uh, generally handles the, the, the spawn and the, and the game, really. Um, and then we have our grid manager and if i click on draw deeper grid here and if it works yes uh, you can see that i have a grid so we're now going to move um, away from that but uh, if you're interested this this demo is like relatively polished compared to uh, some some other ones that may be more rough um, it has um, an advanced character uh, that has like quite a few features. It's also using uh, the prefab variant system. So uh, if you want to make modifications to the Explodude, make them on this one. These are just variants of that prefab uh, that change the, the model to blue, green, and, and so on. But uh, to make changes, you want to make them on this sort of empty cell, empty shell. Um, and as you can see, uh, it has a correct grid movement component. I'll get back to it in a second. So let's have a closer look at how grid movement works. Uh, to do that, let's move to the minimal 3D demo scenes folder and open minimal grid 3D. There's the exact same thing for 2D. Uh, I won't do both in this video. It's the exact same 
system. Um, now in this scene, you can see I have some sort of maze and in my managers, I have a grid manager. I can decide to draw my debug grid or not. I'm gonna leave it on for now, of course. Um, by default, you can see it's set up to have uh, the level as its grid origin. So the, the cool thing with that is that you can move the level and the grid follows you. And uh, its grid unit size is set to one. Uh, the reason I, go I went with one is that it makes positioning stuff uh, easier. You just have to not do too much math. And I'm, I set my texture to tile so that it matches the grid. If I change the grid uh, to 1.5, you can see that uh, here I had like a, a lighter square and a darker square and they don't align to the grid anymore. Uh, if I do two, however, of course, uh, then it aligns again. Um, the, the texture, of course, is purely visual, but once I press play, uh, it's always nice to see that uh, your character lies on this uh, checkerboard perfectly. So if I were to change the grid, uh, the grid size, and uh, to do so, I'm going to disable my obstacles because I don't want to move them around. Uh, I'm going to set the unit size to three and you'll see the, the difference. Now, if I press play, uh, you can see that my character is moving much further every time I do one input, but it's not aligned anymore. And the reason for that is that we changed the size, the size of the grid without moving the um, initial position of our character. So to do so, we just have to, to change that. And uh, usually what I do is I take the point, put it in the middle, and uh, just adjust to be exactly where I should be. And I think it's more like this. There we go. So now if I press play again, oh, I must have done something wrong with the Y position. So yeah, much better. Uh, the the reason my character was falling in may not have been obvious, but uh, it was put. I, I mistakenly put it below ground, so uh, uh, it was spawning below the ground. So now, if I move, you can see that uh, I'm moving exactly at the center of my grid. You can also notice uh, the yellow lines that come from my character. These are collision ray casts. They are being done to uh, let the character know if it's colliding with an obstacle on the left or on the right, and they automatically adjust to the size of the grid. So all you have to do is decide on a size, um, set up your, your manager accordingly, set up your level accordingly, and that's pretty much it. Uh, from the inspector here, you'll be able to turn on and off the deeper grid. You'll be able to also switch to 2D so um, of course that's not something I encourage you to do at runtime, but um, that's the same grid manager for 2D and 3D. Um, you can also yeah, change the size of the deeper grid. Uh, let's say you have a giant world and you want more than 30 times. Uh, well, you can have a lot. Apparently too much uh, becomes a bit slow, but I mean, it works. And uh, you can also change the color of the borders and the color of the uh, um, the filling. So that's pretty much it for the grid manager. The other thing you're gonna need if uh, you want to do grid movement is a character that walks on the grid. So you can have uh, AI characters work on the grid. There's no action, dedicated action for that, but it's uh, relatively simple to implement. Um, I may add some at some point. Uh, and you'll, you've got this uh, minimal grid character and the same for 2D and the X to look at. So um, hopefully that will be enough. 
the character grid movement replaces the character movement script you would have on your character. Don't try to get both of them, it won't work. Uh, they are their own movement controllers and you don't want two of them at once. Um, they are compatible with orientation 2D uh, and 3D, with button activation, pose, time control, all that stuff. Uh, they won't work out of the box with jump, probably, because jump is not meant to be jumping on a grid. You would need a character jump on a grid ability for that. Um, but they will work for weapons, they will work for all that stuff. Um, from the inspector of the character grid movement, you can set a bunch of things, of course, just like for every ability you can uh, enable, uh, well, permit it or not. Uh, you can define your maximum speed and your acceleration. So let's say I change my uh, maximum speed to 25. You'll see that I'm now moving much faster once I gain enough speed and I can change the acceleration which is the time it takes for my character to reach full speed to uh, let's say 200 and now if I move I'm now much faster the cool thing is you can you can really go crazy with this and have uh, your character move at crazy speed so let's say 10 times that and you will always remain within bounds you'll never go through walls you'll uh, uh it's just completely bulletproof so it's a very 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 robust system that allows for crazy stuff collisions will always work it's uh, i i i never managed to uh, get into any sort of trouble with, with even crazy speeds um next if I press play again to lose my changes. Um, so we've seen the movement here. You'll have some debug values that you can uh, have a look at. Might be useful if you're creating new abilities and so on. Uh, for example, you can see at all times the current speed and the multipliers if you apply them uh, via other classes. Uh, you can also have input buffers. So that's something that is really nice and that lets you take these nice turns. Uh, you can see that I'm not doing perfect input. I'm not pressing right at the exact moment my character is free to turn right. I'm actually pressing, uh, well, left, right, up, down, in this case, um, way before. So uh, I'm pressing up now. Well, it's, it's, hard to <laughs> it's hard to explain, but uh, give it a try and you'll see. Uh, the idea is that you can, you can buffer a new command and be like, uh, hey, I'm gonna turn right next time I can and the character will turn right next time it can. So um, from the inspector here, you can uh, define the size of the buffer. Uh, and so that's the, the duration for which the uh, in seconds, uh, for which the input will be stored. And um, there's also an idle threshold, uh, which is the input value below which, uh, let's say on a joypad, um, or joystick um, below that value uh, your character or your input will be considered idle um, over there you can have a look at the uh, obstacle detection offset so uh, that's the origin of these yellow lines it's usually better to put them out of the ground so uh, I, I put them at 0.5 which is high enough so that they interact with my obstacles. Uh, let's say you have lower obstacles, of course, you want to make uh, an adjustment here. And of course, uh, just like with every ability uh, since version 1.5, uh, you have start and stop feedbacks uh, where you can put MM feedbacks to have, I don't know, uh, particles emit while you're moving uh, and stop when you're not moving anymore. You can look at the explodes for an example of that. That's how they are set up. That pretty much covers it for grid movement. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.